الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم و بارک علی نبینا و حبیبینا و امامنا و قدوتینا محمد ابن عبد اللہ و لآلہ و صحبہ اجمعین اما بعد السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی و برکاتہ Welcome dear brothers and sisters to our daily Ramadan reminders and today walhamdulillah on the 29th of Ramadan the title of today's reminder is Mada Ba'da Ramadan what is after Ramadan there is no doubt respected dear respected brothers and sisters that everyone who has been fasting in the month of Ramadan and everyone who has been standing in pray, prayer during its nights he hopes that his fasting and his prayers are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he hopes that his efforts and his striving and his hard work during Ramadan is appreciated and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he fulfills this wish of his and that he grants him that which he hopes it, that which he hopes for The acceptance of actions, dear brothers and sisters, have certain signs and indications. There are certain signs and there are certain indications for the acceptance of deeds. And there are certain characteristics, if present, it is hope that a person's actions have been accepted and from these signs is that after Ramadan a person he finds himself doing more good being more upright and being more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than before Ramadan. And he finds himself determined and dedicated to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he finds himself preserving and maintaining the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offering the five daily prayers in the masjid, in congregation. He finds himself loving good, uh, performing good and calling others to good and commanding others with good. And he finds himself hating evil, staying away from evil and warning others against this evil. On the other hand, if a person's condition after Ramadan is the same as before Ramadan or even worse, reckless in his transgression and misguidance, too lazy and too negligent to carry out the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engrossed in sinning and disobedience and inciting others to sin then there is no doubt that these are all signs of great loss and these are signs that this person is truly unsuccessful for he did not take advantage of the time during this season of obedience 
nor did he pursue the divine gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this season of gifts. Nor did he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Nor did he take the means to obtain Allah's forgiveness in the month of forgiveness and in the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. So how great is his loss and how grave is his calamity and how terrible is his outcome and his punishment. The blessed month of Ramadan, dear brothers and sisters, it was a tremendous season for getting oneself used to and getting oneself accustomed to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to striving hard in worship and to competing with one another in performing good deeds. So it is shameful and extremely unbefitting of a Muslim that after this blessed month, this noble month, that he abandons worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As is the condition of some of the people who do not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except in Ramadan and who do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except in Ramadan, it is said to these people, O oh you who knew in Ramadan that you have a Lord who you worship who you obeyed, who you feared, who you hoped in, how then have you forgotten him subhanahu wa ta'ala after Ramadan? O oh, you who knew in Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon you five daily prayers to be prayed in the masjid and congregation, how is it now that after Ramadan you have become ignorant of this or you pretend to be ignorant of this. O oh, you who knew in Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, has prohibited you from sinning and disobedience, how now <laughs> after Ramadan have you forgotten this? O oh, you who knew in Ramadan that in front of you is Jannah, Paradise and the Hellfire. In front of you is reward and punishment. How is it that now after Ramadan you have become heedless of this? O oh, you who used to fill the mosques in Ramadan and used to recite the Quran, how is it that after Ramadan that you have abandoned the mosques and you have boycott and you have boycotted the Quran. Very strange is the affair of these people who do not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except in Ramadan and who do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except in Ramadan. And some of our pious predecessors some of our Salaf, they were asked concerning the condition of such people. And they said, Evil people. How evil are these people who do not know Allah except in Ramadan? The Lord, dear brothers and sisters, the Lord, the Rabb of all the months is the one same Rabb. He is the Rabb, He is the Lord of Ramadan, He is the Lord of Shawwal, He is the Lord of Sha'ban, He is the Lord of all the months. So what is obligatory upon 
every single Muslim is that he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he abstains from disobeying Allah azza wa jal at all times in all places as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ هَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ and worship your Lord until comes unto you the certainty, i.e. death. Meaning, be constant in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be constant in turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance throughout your entire life until you die, until your life in this world comes to an end. Because this life a person, this life a person has in this, in this dunya is not his. It doesn't belong to him. It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he want from his servant? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants from his servant to use this life that he has given him to obey him and to worship him and not for anything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّ salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen Say, indeed my prayer my sacrifice, my living, and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of the creation. So everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person now, he occupies his time, his life, his health, his free time, his energy, his youth, his intellect, his mind, his thoughts, his heart, his tongue, all his body parts. If he now occupies all these things with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not commanded, with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has not legislated, whether they be the obligations or the nafal sunnas or the, the recommended acts <coughs> or even the mubahat, the mubah. Mubah is something which is permissible like sleeping, eating. These are something which are permissible. Uh, for example, if, so, if someone does something mubah which is permissible, uh, if his intention is to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this thing that is mubah, then this, this also is worship. Such as uh, if a person was to now sleep with the intention that when I wake up, I can be strong to worship Allah, to pray fajr and, and worship Allah throughout the day, then this he is rewarded with for this. Even though sleeping in itself is not an act of worship. But with this intention, it makes an act of worship. So, the point here is, if a person now, he occupies all these things I just mentioned, with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not commanded, with something the message of Allah has not legislated, then this person has truly wronged himself. He has oppressed himself with great oppression. And this on Yawm al is going to be, is going to turn into regret for him. And it's going to be grief and sorrow and pain for him. And this grief and this sorrow and pain and regret, the extent of this is going to be in accordance with the extent of his negligence and his heedlessness in this life. And whoever preserves and maintains something and is, and is constant in doing that thing, 
then he dies upon that thing and he's resurrected upon that thing. And this in fact is from the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal in his creation. This is from the ways of Allah Taala in his creation. This is from the universal laws of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in his creation. And this is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala orders and commands and requests and asks his servants and his awliya to remain steadfast upon Islam and to persevere in adhering to the rules and rituals and the teachings of Islam until he dies, until he then continue in this state until he dies upon that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah as he, as he should be feared. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. And die not except in a state of Islam with complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala in his tafsir, when he explained this ayah, he said, this means persevere in your Islam while you are well and safe so that you may die upon it and this is because the most generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it his decision that whatever state one lives in whatever state one lives in then that is what he dies upon and that is what he's resurrected upon and we seek refuge in Allah from dying on other than Islam and this is the end of his statement, Rahimahullah, in his tafsir. And there comes an authentic hadith where it is mentioned that people were doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma, he was sitting holding his stick. And he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa he recited this ayah, O you who believe. Fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam with, sub, with full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet recited Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu he said the Prophet recited this ayah and then he sallallahu alayhi wa said if a drop of zakum and zakum as we have mentioned previously is a, is a horrid, horrible, disgusting tree in uh, Jahannam, which is in fact the food of the people of Jahannam, waliyadu billah. The Prophet wasallam said, if a drop of zakum were to be dropped on the earth, it would ruin the livelihood of the people of this world. So how about those individuals who have no food except zakum? A'udhu billah min thalik. May Allah protect us from that. And that is for those people who are the dwellers of the hellfire. And from the comprehensive supplications that one can supplicate with to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the supplication of Yusuf alayhi salam, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, where he was addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he alayhi salam, he said, Anta wali fi dunya wal akhira, you are my protector, in this life and in the hereafter, tawaffani musliman, cause me to die as a Muslim, wal hikni bis salihin, and join me with the righteous. And in this life, dear brothers and sisters, there is no good in this life. And there is no happiness in this life. There is no peace in this life. And there is no security in this life. Except by strongly holding on to the religion of Islam. And adhering to its teachings, its legislations and its laws. In fact, a person's... Uh, in fact the soundness and the well-being and the correctness of a person's life, any dunya, worldly life, 
is connected to the well-being and the correctness and the soundness of his religion. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned both of these together in a tremendous supplication where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma aslih li deeni alladhi huwa ismatu amri. O Allah, set right, set right for me my religion which is the safeguard of my affairs. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي دُنْيَايَ أَلَّتِي فِيهَا مَعَاشِي Set right for me my worldly affairs, in which is my living. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي آخِرَتِي أَلَّتِي فِيهَا مَعَادِي And set right for me my hereafter, in which will be my final abode. وَجْعَلِ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لِي فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ Make this life a means of increase. Make this life a means of increase in all that is good for me. وَجْعَلِ الْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لِي مِنْ كُلِّ شَرٍ And make death a relief for me from all evil. This is the end of the supplication. And the measure of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to start his month, he used to start each and every one of his months with this well-known supplication when he used to see the new moon, the crescent moon. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make the following supplication. He used to say, Allahumma ahlilhu alayna bil amni wal iman wa salamati wal islam rabbi wa rabbuka Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, O oh Allah, bring it over us, meaning this month, bring it over us with peace <coughs> and faith and security and Islam. My Lord and your Lord is Allah. So in this dua, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is pointing out the connection between peace and faith and security and Islam. It is as if the Prophet ﷺ is saying to us that if you want to live a life of peace, if you want to live a life of peace, <coughs> and security and safety in this month of yours, in fact throughout your life, then strongly hold on to Islam and live upon faith. For indeed whosoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adheres to his sharia, his legislation, which he has sent down to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he does not spoil this with shirk, with associating parts with Allah in worship. He does not spoil this with kufr, disbelief. He does not spoil this with bid'ah, with innovations. He does not spoil this with ma'as, his sins and disobedience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees for him peace, security and guidance in this life and in the next. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمُ أُولَٰئِكَ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship Him alone and do not mix their belief with oppression for them only there is security and they are the guided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in an ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who say that our Lord is Allah and then remain steadfast. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels descend upon them at the time of their death. 
Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu saying to them fear not no grieve wa abshiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun but receive glad tidings of paradise which you have been promised nahnu awliya'ukum fil hayati dunya wa fil akhirah we have been your friends in the in the life of this world and we shall be your friends in the hereafter walakum fiha ma tashtahi anfusukum therein meaning in the hereafter you shall have whatever your souls desire walakum fiha ma tad'un and therein you shall have whatever you ask for nuzulam min ghafurir rahim an entertainment from the oft forgiving the most merciful وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّنْ مَنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And whose words are better than someone who calls others to Allah, he does good and says, I am truly one of the Muslims. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who say our Lord is Allah and then remain steadfast, فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ There will be no fear for them, nor will they grieve. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا It is they who will be the residents of paradise. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Staying there forever. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As a reward for what they used to do. And the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, whoever would, be li- whoever would like to be delivered from hell, saved from the hell, and would like to enter paradise, then let him die believing in Allah and the last day, and let him treat people as he would like to be treated. And this is the end of the hadith. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to live upon Islam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he causes us to die upon Iman. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us firm upon the haqq, upon the truth and upon guidance until we meet him. Subhana wa ta'ala and with this we conclude our daily reminders for this blessed month of Ramadan and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our efforts and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant sincerity and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make everything we have done during this blessed month of Ramadan make it purely for his for his sake and for his face and with this week we conclude wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'la a'lam وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين